In today's episode of the podcast, we're taking a deeper dive into spiral spun yarns and a little bit into boucle yarns and looking at knitting patterns that are designed with these particular yarns in mind. So that sounds like just your cozy cup of tea. Get comfy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. In the last episode of the podcast, we talked about bulky weight yarns, and I shared with you that my um, yarn line, Fiber for the People, which is my yarn business, but my yarn line coming to the shop for this Saturday shop update, which I guess if you're watching this when it goes live, could be tomorrow, could be today. But this Saturday, um, October, what is, oh my goodness, October 5th, this shop update is going to feature a new type of yarn that falls into the fancy yarn category. And that is a spiral spun bulky weight yarn. So I talked about this in the last video and I shared with you, um, we kind of went window shopping for bulky weight patterns in general, not specific to spiral spun or boucle yarns, which is kind of a close cousin to the spiral spun yarn, but just bulky weight yarns in general. But it really had me kind of thinking about this really new and exciting fancy yarn, if you will, that I'm bringing to the Fiber for the People shop. So um, these are just some example colors that are coming to the shop. I've got a few more, but this, what you see here, is a spiral spun yarn. Now, when we were talking about this in the last video, I was using um, the term boucle to describe this yarn, and, and that is not accurate. Boucle yarn is a very similar textured yarn. However, the differences, um, there are some differences. And in fact, I looked this up because I wanted to be able to communicate the differences here. Boucle yarn has a looped and curly appearance that creates a bumpy textured surface. Boucle yarn is often used for upholstery, blankets, scarves, mittens, hats, and boot toppers. It can also be used as a shearling inspired collar or cuff. Boucle yarn is soft, warm, and easy to clean. Now, based on every definition of boucle yarn, it does seem very similar in vibe and appearance to what I have here. However, spiral spun is a little bit more consistent. So I'm going to pop up a picture of a typical boucle yarn and you're going to see it right here. And you can tell that it's very lumpy and bumpy and inconsistent. It almost looks like it has little knobs of yarn on there and it tends to be I don't know. I don't want to say it's not ropey by any means, but there's just a little bit of an inconsistency in the weight of, of the overall weight of the yarn. It's beautiful, but it's just a little different in that regard. Spiral spun yarn, which thanks to some viewers who commented down below my last video to let me know that's what they think this yarn is if you're talking about it like technically speaking. Spiral spun yarn, also known as corkscrew yarn, um, is created by twisting two single yarns of different thicknesses together. The shorter yarn forms the core of the spiral, and you can actually see what is used here as the core of the spiral by looking at this strand that's tying off the skein of yarn here. Um, that is what is used as the core, and in fact, I'm gonna, I have a little swatch I'm gonna show in just a minute. I'm gonna try and get up here and I wanna make sure that you can see. But if you look at this, you can see that the single ply yarn is what's spiraling around. And I'm gonna try and move some things here to see if you can't see that central core in there. If I get really close, you might be able to see it, but there is a central core of yarn in there that the single ply is kind of spiraling around to give it this spiral structure. If you're familiar with Lion Brand Homespun, that's what that is. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's a novelty yarn. It's, a, it's considered a fancy yarn, but it is kind of that spiral texture. And that's what makes spiral spun yarn and boucle yarn a little different is that there's much more of an organized structure going on here. We have a single ply spiraling around an inner core. Boucle is a little bit more inconsistent with um, loops and curls and bits and bobs and all of that, which makes it kind of a novelty yarn. So, and, and when I was looking up because what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some knitting patterns where that are kind of designed with this yarn in mind, this type of yarn. And I'm using this yarn, this type of yarn to encompass both boucle and this spiral spun yarn, because I really do feel that this kind of teddy bear texture is also being lumped into the boucle category, at least 
as it relates to the resulting fabric when you're knitting with this or a boucle yarn. You're getting a very similar nubby kind of novelty fabric when you knit with this. <clears throat> and I kind of have gleaned that by looking at various different patterns that are using a yarn like this one and ones that are using a boucle yarn. I'm seeing very similar effects in terms of the fabric. And I'm going to show you the fabric that I get when I knit with this yarn before we dive into some of the patterns. But I, I really wanted to kind of I not only wanted to look at patterns that are designed with this yarn in mind because I kind of knew going into it that there were going to be a lot of very unique and novelty designs, things that you maybe wouldn't really wear, like almost like statement pieces, right? When you think of knitting with fancy yarn, you don't typically think of very like wearable, um, I don't know, like staple items in your wardrobe because you feel that the texture is going to be very novelty. OK, well, I kind of wanted to not prove that wrong, but I wanted to press home the point that actually you can get some really awesome staple pieces that have a little bit of a nuance to them because of the texture of the fabric, but that can still satisfy those staple you know, categories in your wardrobe, I guess you can say. All right. So all of that being said, I want to show you um, what this type of spiral spun yarn looks like knit up into a swatch. This is stockinette stitch knit flat on a size 11 needle. I, when I work with this and I've done it on a size nine and a size 13 and a size 11, I would say that the range is anywhere from an eight to a 10 and a half. A 13, or excuse me, take that back, eight to 11. A 13 is a little too open and airy for it to be the standard. Of course, you can do whatever you want, but for a standard nice fabric that does have a little bit of openness without being too dense, I think an 11, anywhere from, from like a 10 to 11 would be perfect. So here is the swatch that I created with this yarn. Okay, so that is the texture I'm getting with just the yarn. There's nothing being paired with it, no mohair, nothing like that. And this is on a size 11. So if you imagine this going down a couple of needle sizes, you won't have the little uh, holes that you see in there, that little gapping. It won't be quite so open. It'll be a little bit more dense. And that might be more to a person's preference. You know, who's to say? But that is what the texture looks like with this yarn um, on a size 11 needle. And I think it's really beautiful. It definitely has a nubby and kind of slubby texture, but far less, I think there's a better word, excuse me, I think there's a better word than novelty that I'm looking for here. I don't know, like far less fancy yarn than I was expecting. This to me has a little bit of like a rustic nature that I really, really love. Now I'm gonna close the door to my office. The air conditioner is still kicking on. So that is the fabric, right? So we have that. We know that we have two different types of this fancy yarn in, that we're referring to today when we look at these patterns, boucle and spiral spun yarn. And I wanna dive in and share with you some really lovely knitting patterns that I have found that incorporate the, or that incorporate this kind of yarn, but we're also designed with this kind of yarn in mind. And I also want to share with you some store-bought examples um, that you can purchase. These are things that are not patterns. They're just um, store-bought examples of boucle or fancy yarn inspired sweaters. So you can kind of see what it looks like off the rack, if you will, and how it's kind of being incorporated into the trends. And what I'm going to do here is head over to my Milano board for today's episode. So I put together a Milano board. It's pretty simple this time. It just has a few um, columns of photos with links and all of that included. Um, for today's episode, if you would like to have access to this, head over to the Wool Needles Hands Patreon. Join there for free. You don't have to become a paying patron to have access to the Milanotes, but go check it out. If you would like to help support the channel here and become a paid patron, you'll have access to a lot of additional content. But just to receive the Milano board for today's episode, just join over there as a friend um, and you can have access to this. And all of this will be right there in one place. Okay, I am going to record my screen and we're going to get started with this because I'm excited to share with you what I have found. Okay, here we are on my Milano board. I want to start um, by looking at this sweater here. I found some really cute ones. Now this is off the rack. This is a store-bought sweater. Um, when I googled like boucle 
sweater patterns that you could purchase. I don't, I can't remember how I Googled. <laughs> this is the one of the first ones that came up and I loved the colors here, but this will just give you a little bit of an idea of what this looks like put together in a sweater that you could essentially get off the rack. Okay. So if I get in close here, I would like to be able to get even closer. I'm kind of doing a manual zoom. This is referred to as a boucle sweater. And if you look here, the fabric of the sweater is definitely very fluffy and I don't like to use the word fuzzy. I feel like in the knitting and crochet community that can sometimes carry a negative connotation. <laughs> I don't know, but this does have a little bit of a pleasantly fuzzy vibe to it. Um, I really love it. And I love, I just love, I love the overall look of this. Typically it would be out of my wheelhouse considering how colorful it is, the novelty nature of the fabric, but I kind of feel like we're moving into this era right now, especially me personally. That's all about kind of pushing the color envelope. I don't know so much about like shape, but maybe texture. And that would include also the texture of just the overall fabric of the garment. And with this yarn, I think what's really kind of cool is that the texture is the yarn. Several people mentioned that in the comments of my last video saying, you want to kind of be careful the kind of texture you knit with this yarn because it's going to be lost because the yarn is the texture. And they are 100% correct. In fact, I talk about this a lot when talking about pairing yarns with mohair or with a surrey, is that when you do that, you're going to reduce the impact of any kind of texture that you knit with that yarn. And I, I know this to be true and I feel very strongly that you're kind of putting a lot of extra work in that isn't going to have the payoff you're hoping for. This is a yarn that has, that makes that, you know, uh, proves that point is that the yarn is the texture. So if you want texture, this yarn is kind of providing it for you just by existing in your fabric. You don't have to knit any additional texture. Now you absolutely could, um, but it's nice to kind of let that texture show itself off here, which I think is really cool. So this is one example of a store-bought sweater that I thought was really cool. Um, I had, let's see, there is one here from ASOS, which I thought was kind of cool looking. I liked this one because it's very like, I mean, the look that we have going on here could be either here nor there, depending on your preferences. I want to get closer to the sweater. All right, why is this so difficult? It's selling fast, folks, but you can see the fabric here. Look at that, oop, go in. So this is a boucle fabric. I can tell looking at this that the difference between that fabric and what I'm going to get with this yarn here, this one is way more nubby and neppy because it's knit with a boucle yarn and this is a spiral spun yarn. And there is there are some distinct differences. This looks much more like um, kind of like the outside of a plushie, if you will. I could see where this could get that way too, but I think that this is just a little bit more boucle than what we would get from this, but it's still a similar vibe, right? And and today when we look at knitting patterns, we're not, we're kind of looking at that interchangeably, I guess you could say. All right, so let's go back. Um, the, there's another one I have here. I thought this one was really pretty. This is no longer available to purchase. Well, it's a $10 sweater now, it's out of stock. But I just liked the look of it because it had some additional texture in the raglans. You can see here that we have some ribbing in the raglans. This again is a boucle yarn. I can see that here because it is a little bit more neppy, but you're getting a very similar vibe. I'm using that word. It's just the best one I have for this. I feel like this yarn here, the spiral spun yarn would have a lot more of this effect if you knit it on a smaller needle to bring the stitches closer together and have everything kind of butt up together and really cause things to bloom maybe more. I think the open nature of this particular swatch is allowing stuff to spread out. Um, I probably, I guess if, I don't know, I guess if I were to do this again or knit something with this, I would probably go down a needle size or two um, to bring things in just a little bit. And it's so lightweight. I mean, this is so lightweight. It, it would not become dense. It's just light as air. Okay. But I really loved the look of this particular, it's sticking to me, of this particular sweater. All right, let's go back. There's, I think, another couple more. Oh gosh, isn't that so pretty? It's just a really wearable sweater, oversized, but it's got that like teddy bear boucle fabric that you're getting from these kinds of yarns that like really, fl it's not even floofy. I mean, it's kind of fuzzy. It's plushy. Okay, we're going to use the word plushy for this. It's a plushy yarn. Mohair in Surrey is floofy. Icelandic is fuzzy. Boucle and spiral spun yarn is plushy. Okay, and this is so pretty. Isn't that lovely? 
Oh, so pretty. Okay, there was that. And then I think this last one. Is this just the last one? Yeah. All right. I love the oh, see. Okay. I love this too. I like that we're seeing it here on a man. I love the color. I love that this is being worn as a very staple piece, right? This is a, an everyday sweater. It's clean lines, classic lines. There's nothing novelty about this besides the texture. And even so, that plushy texture is still just really cool. I mean, yeah, it's it's not standard. Okay. It's there's definitely you look at that and you're like, oh, Okay, that's unusual. That's an interesting texture. That's not your typical, you know, pullover texture. But being knit in this color with this silhouette, it's really just very cool. It's like bring out the funky in a way that can still be wearable by making sure everything else is relatively low key and keeping some of those other elements understated, a little bit more subtle. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's the way, in my opinion, it's the way to do funky, okay? Now you could go all out, no holds barred and just funky in every aspect and that's one way to do it. But then if you're gonna go, like you can't do in between. If you're gonna do funky, you either go all in or you keep it really restrained and like only one funky element at a time. But, you know, ultimately you do what makes you happy. Don't listen to me. I'm just, I'm just me. This, I just love this. I think that's really pretty. The $205 sweater. Um, Love that color. I want that color. I want a sweater that is that color. That's really lovely. Okay, so that was the last of the store-bought examples that I have here. I want to go over to Ravelry and I want to share with you some actual knitting patterns that have yarn like this in mine. Now remember, what I have here and I'm offering is just a spiral spun yarn, but a lot of yarn companies offer this, but they also offer boucle yarn. We're using both of those interchangeably, even though I know they're not the same thing, but because you're going to get a similar vibe in the garment. And I can't, like I was, it was so much easier for me when I did my Ravelry search to just go and I'm going to head over to Ravelry. We're going to use this really quick as, as an example. So pardon me for just a second. So when I went to advanced search, um, I didn't do anything over here except for has a photo and is knitting. We're really focusing on knitting today, guys. Um, that's that's really all I did. And then I just went over here and I typed in boucle because I knew that that was going to give me the closest vibe to what I was looking for. When I type in spiral spun, um, I did not get much of anything. I think it was like less than, okay, so yeah, less than 20 results, spiral spun. And it wasn't really in reference to what I was wanting it to be in reference to. So I just typed in boucle and that gave me lots of patterns that incorporated boucle yarn. Um, some of them didn't, you have to weed through, but like it did give me lots where you could see that the yarn being used was a boucle yarn. And so that's how I established the search um, that garnered me the results I'm sharing with you guys today. So we're going to go back here and I'm going to start with this first one that I discovered. This one is not really the first one I would have expected to use in today's video, but let's go ahead and do it. This is called the Polar Teddy Jacket. They're using that word teddy in there because the yarn just gives off that vibe when you knit it into fabric. It's very plush. Okay. Remember plushy. And I loved this. Um, this was designed with this yarn in mind. Now this fabric that you see here in this gorgeous jacket is produced using a boucle yarn. I'm gonna go over here and look, you can kind of see, this is a boucle yarn and you're going to notice by looking at this here, the difference between this yarn and the yarn that I have. You can see in here that there is some kind of core running through. Gosh, isn't that gorgeous? But then there's these little loops these little loops that you see kind of curling around. It almost looks like doll hair, if you will. Um, just really loopy and lovely, and I love it. The yarn that I have here, as you've seen, is not like that. There's not a lot of these loops. It's a spiral spun outer ply around an inner core. So it's similar in nature and plushiness, different in like overall texture if we're really keeping score, okay? Um, I feel like you could get a similar vibe with a jacket like this knit in either a spiral spun yarn or a boucle yarn. And in this case, I mean, look at how beautiful this is. Can we just drool over that for a second? I really love that. And I know that it's got this like funky fur look to it, but I feel like, oh, it's so luxurious and glamorous, but also really wearable. I love it. 
but this is use, uh, this is knit using that yarn held double. So this is a super bulky weight item. I love that too. Um, it is available. I, yes, it's available in English, Danish, German, and Norwegian. Um, it says the polar teddy jacket is an oversized jacket that is knitted seamlessly top down in stockinette stitch. I'm just drooling and gets its cozy structure by using boucle yarn held double. It has a high collar and is closed with a button band and invisible snap buttons. The jacket has attached pockets and flaps can also be added. The sleeves are also very generously shaped to get a maximum coziness level when wearing. I mean, it's a jacket. You really want to be able to kind of wear something like that over something else. I'm obsessed with this. I love it. And how cool is that fabric? And that's the fabric we get with these fancy yarns, the boucle spiral spun yarns. I know I'm like two years late to the boucle. I think it was like all the rage in 2022 and yarn dyers are still selling it. And it's obviously still very cool, but I feel like I'm just now kind of as I'm stepping out of my comfort zone in terms of color, I feel like I'm also doing that with texture. So, you know, pardon my lateness to the party, but what can you do? All right, so that was my first example. Let's go down to this next one here. Um, this is called The Lee by Martin Story. Even Martin Story himself was dabbling in the boucle texture. This is a bulky weight pullover here. Let's get in there and look at it. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. He's all the way out the window in this second picture. Really, Martin? Come on, we gotta be able to get better pictures. It's very like Andrew Wyeth. Okay, sorry. Let's get in a little closer here because this isn't, okay, there we go. Isn't that lovely? I mean, I don't love the colors happening here. I would love it to just be all one color. I think that would be great. But regardless, it's a great looking sweater, a basic crew neck sweater. But the reason I chose this was because number one, it's being shown here on a masculine figure on this man here. And boucle is not just for the feminine types, okay? It's for everybody who feels good wearing it. This is a pocket. Is that a pocket? That is a pocket. I love that. I didn't notice that before. But I love this because it's showing you that something classic like this raglan, uh, not raglan, excuse me, like this crew neck sweater can be knit for a man here with this gorgeous boucle yarn. And I love that. It looks like this is a set in sleeve construction here. It's by Martin Story. I'm willing to bet it's se uh, seamed. Yes, it is definitely seamed. It says, knit this ma men's color block stocking stitch sweater to show off the different textures and subtle breast pocket. But isn't that lovely? And it's a bulky weight. Some other projects, I'm wondering if people have used the same yarn. That just looks like the sample to me. Oh, it's so cool. It's got this like real ski town, you know, Aspen vibe. I'm loving it. All right. So that is my second example. Let's move on to this next one because I'm obsessed with this next one. I can't even, I can't even tell you. Okay. This is called the boucle sweater solo. And this is by Len Holm Samso. I have mentioned her before and I, I worry I'm not pronouncing her name correctly. This is a top down raglan sweater knit with boucle yarn. I believe there might be some mohair in here. Why don't I just go ahead and look. Mohair by Gannard boucle, mohair by Gannard brush lace. It looks like what's happening here is she has a mohair boucle yarn paired with a mohair brushed lace yarn being held double. It doesn't mention here the overall weight. Maybe it does. Let's go down. This isn't written in English. It's available in Danish, French, and Norwegian. I wonder. Okay. Boucle sweater is a begin. And what I just did there, by the way, just in case you need to know this, if you double tap on a Mac or right click on a, a PC, you can translate the page to your language. Okay. Just, just in case you're wondering. Boucle sweater is a beginner friendly raglan sweater. It is without difficult details and the boucle yarn hides very practically any irregularities. And who doesn't want that? But it doesn't say what the overall weight is of the yarn. To me, it looks like a bulky weight sweater for sure. But I love that. So that is the um, boucle sweater solo by Len Holmes Samso. You can definitely see that boucle texture here with those curly little loops like doll hair. Different um, in nature than what you would get with a spiral spun yarn, but similar in vibe. Okay, we got that plushiness and look at how pretty these raglans are. And that neckline. So beautiful.
Okay, I've got several more left and I wanna kind of work through these relatively quickly. We're get, Again, we're just trying to sh see that these lovely, fancy yarns, boucle yarns can really be used to knit some really cozy, plushy, but very wearable and staple inspired classics for your wardrobe, which if you know me, you know that I love that. All right, so this is the next one. Where is it? Why is it taking so long? Uh-oh, Ravel Ravelry is currently, what is going on? That is wild. Ravelry is like down right now. Oh, no, we're back. We're back in business, baby. Okay, so this is called the Louisiana Sweater by Petite Knit. Now, I had not, I didn't know about this sweater until I started planning for this video. And just look at now it's not, now it's not even responding to my like clicking. Come on now, Ravelry, let's do this. Okay, I feel like we're getting somewhere. I saw something pop up. Wow, things are really just not great right now. But the old Ravelrino. Oh, come now. Not not now, not when I'm making a video, Ravelry. This is being knit, I'm back, by the way. This is being knit with Sandisgarn Borstet Alpaca, which um, I don't know. Let's look and see if that is a boucle yarn or if it is the one she's pairing it with that is the boucle yarn. We're going to find out. So no. Okay. So the Sandus Garn, this looks like a Surrey alpaca, I think. And it's not letting me click on things. Oh yes, it's back. Okay. This is, I think maybe a Surrey alpaca. What does it say? Uh, alpaca and nylon. No, it's just, it just says alpaca and nylon, but it's brushed alpaca. It's what's floofy. And then the yarn she's pairing that with is a DK weight um, Isayer boucle yarn, which you can see here. You can see those little swirling bits of fiber in there that give it that boucle texture. And all together, she's, yeah, she's saying here that she's getting a super bulky with that, which surprises me because the... Oh, that's why, because she has a bulky weight floofy fiber here and she's pairing it with a DK weight boucle fiber altogether. She's saying that that's giving five to six wraps per inch, which is ultimately a super bulky weight yarn. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, roughly super bulky. A really good point somebody made um, in the like two videos back when we were talking about knitting pet peeves is that a lot of times super bulky the density is really important. So the density here is going to be real low because she's using a brushed fiber that is considered bulky in its, almost like in its diameter and in its gauge, but not necessarily having anything to do with its density. It's going to be very lightweight. Um, so when it's paired with that boucle yarn, you're not going to have a super dense, super bulky yarn. Um, one super bulky yarn and another super bulky yarn might be the same gauge, or you might get the same gauge if you knit with them, but the density will be different depending on how many plies go in to producing that yarn and how dense the individual plies are. So that's really important to keep in mind. So a sweater like this, I personally wouldn't knit a sweater like this with like, let's say, something like Lion Brand Thick and Quick, which is a very dense, ropey, super bulky yarn. It, you would end up with such a heavy sweater. Um, I've, you could, you absolutely could, but I wouldn't because I wouldn't want something quite so dense and heavy. Look at that, that is absolutely gorgeous. But something like this paired with like a mohair or something like this paired with something lighter, this is very lightweight. It's not very dense at all. So that would be maybe something I would consider or of course what she's using here. So this is the Louisiana sweater by Petite Knit. I wanna to get to my next example here before Ravelry loses it again. And this is the Nourish Pattern by, Kim, I believe it's Kim Hargraves, and now it's not popping up fast enough for me to know for sure. Okay, so this is Nourish by Kim Hargreaves. This is, I'm sharing this as an example because I think it's beautiful. I don't know if I would ever knit a cardigan this long. It's just quite a substantial project, but I think it's so lovely. It looks cozy for wearing around the house. I'm waiting for the picture to pop up here because Ravelry is just like, crapped the bed. All systems operational, my foot. No incidents reported today. What are you talking about? No, Ravelry, you're not working. I'm trying to make a video here. I really am going to just have to use my manual zoom feature on my computer here <laughs> just so we can get a little closer. But isn't this lovely? I think it's so beautiful. It has a very casual at home vibe, but she's wearing it over this really beautiful gold glittery dress. 
I don't know. I love this. So this is just another example about how a really plushy yarn like this and the resulting fabric could go to making something very wearable, very staple, and very lovely. I'm afraid to click on any of the video the links here. I apologize because as I'm filming this, Ravelry is not working and it's really driving me bonkers. Okay. The next one I have is the permafro permafrost sweater by Weetra Designs. Let's see how long it takes this to pop up for us here. There we are. Okay. I love this one. Now she, um, I have seen designs by her before. This is available in English, Norwegian, and Swedish. And I really love the overall aesthetic of her style. It's very Parisian. If, if you don't mind me saying, I just really like the vibe. Okay. I just clicked on a picture that might've been a mistake. We shall see. You just really have to bear with me here. I would refilm this when Ravelry is working, but that is far more labor intensive than it seems and time consuming. And I really want this to just work. What's going on at Ravelry? Well, it looks like Ravelry has officially shit the bed. So I apologize. I cannot film that portion of my video. I'm really frustrated about that because, um, you know, the time it takes to put these things together is it, it, it's something that takes time and I really wish that it worked better. So what I am hoping to do here is pop in some pictures because overall, what I really want to emphasize is that this boucle yarn, spiral yarn, I don't even want to call it a craze, but I guess you could say kind of like a movement. And there's something to be had for that because that really plushy fabric is so lovely. Who doesn't love really plushy, soft, scrumptious fabric. But a lot of times we tend to think that it's to be, it's to be held off for those real novelty pieces, those real statement pieces. But with the examples that I'm hoping you're seeing run across your screen here and the examples that you can link to on my Millinote board so that you can check it out later, you can see that you can knit up some really gorgeous patterns and items with yarn like this. There are some really fun honorable mentions that I have here. Um, there's a really lovely vintage pattern called the textured cardigan number 366 for men. It's a navy blue cardigan in a boucle yarn and I absolutely adore it. And because of that, I actually went down that rabbit hole and discovered Patricia Roberts um, and she has a knitting book that contains the Joey Boy pattern. Now it's a really difficult pattern to see, but it is knit with a boucle yarn. And I have purchased this book because I want to do a deep dive into Patricia Roberts book because the patterns, they're, I mean, super statement pieces, but it's such a fun book. And I really want to dive into that with you. So it kind of led me down that rabbit hole. But overall for today, I just wanted to share with you guys a look at some knitting patterns that you can make using these really lovely textured yarns that don't have any real texture knit into them because the texture is the yarn, but yet they're very wearable and can be added to your wardrobe. So definitely check out the patterns that I share with you guys here today. I apologize for this not working out the way that I had hoped, but I hope you're able to take away something from this today and definitely check out the Milano board by heading over to the Patreon for the Wool Needles Hands channel. It means so much to me to know that you're just even checking it out. Should you decide to stick around and support the channel over there, that means a great deal to me. Well, you guys, I will see you in the next podcast episode. And until then, I wish you happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.